Welcome to Mr. R's Art Class. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Thumbs, subs, and ring that bell. So you can think of these written critiques as kind of like a mystery or a scavenger hunt or a treasure hunt. And you're trying to put all these clues together that you find and you gather for this written critique. And you try to put them all together to try to figure out why was this artist trying to make this artwork? Why is this artwork important? Or what makes it important? So you're looking at all these parts of the critique, starting with the biography, the title of the artwork, what do you actually see occurring in the artwork, the elements of art, the principles of design, the interpretation, what was this artwork trying to get across, what was the message, what was the goal of this artwork, and then the judgment part, was the artist able to actually get that message across, was the artist successful at making this artwork, so again, you could kind of think of this as a mystery, as a scavenger hunt or a treasure hunt, and you're trying to put all these clues together, all of these hints together to try to figure out what was this artwork about, what makes it important, and what can I take away from this artwork when I'm making my own artwork. So these are the types of questions that you should be asking yourself when you're making your artwork to make your own artwork purposeful so that your artwork serves a purpose and has a meaning to it. So you should be asking yourself these same questions when you're making your own artwork. What's the title of my artwork going to be? What's it going to be made out of? Why is it going to be made out of this medium? Which elements of art am I going to use? Which principles of design am I going to use? Why am I using those? How do I want this artwork to be interpreted by the viewer? So for the biography, I'm going to give you a paragraph and you're going to read through that whole paragraph and you're going to try to find the one most important thing. So I'm going to give you a paragraph and you're going to try to find the one most important thing to you. So this isn't a trick question. I'm not trying to get you guys to all find the one most important thing to me. I want you to read through this whole paragraph and I want you to be able to find the one most important thing to you. So before we read the biography, here are some of the directions here. So we're going to read the artist's biography. You're going to find the one most important thing to you that you read about in that biography. Then you're going to rewrite that one thing in your own words. So you're going to rewrite that one fact in your own words that you read about from that paragraph. So here's a writing prompt. So this is how you can start your response. So the question would be, what was the one most important thing to you? So you would write that on the left-hand side. So what was the one fact that was most important to you? That goes on the left hand side. Then on the right hand side, the way you could start your response is the most important thing that I read about in this paragraph was, and then you fill in that blank. You fill in that blank with that one thing that was most important to you that you read about in that paragraph. So the way you could start your response is the most important thing that I read about in this paragraph was, and then you tell me what that one thing that was most important thing to you. So let's go back to the biography and I'll give you about five minutes to read through this, find that one most important thing to you, and then you fill in that blank for the biography question. If you have any questions, go ahead and let me know.
So for this part of the written critique, we're gonna go ahead and copy down this artwork information. So this first line here is the artist of the artwork. Then in quotation marks, everything in quotation marks here is the title of the artwork. Then you have the year. Then the next line should be what the artwork is made out of. So the medium. So the medium would be what the artwork is made out of. This next line here is the type of artwork. Is it a movie? Is it a poster? Is it an illustration? Is it a drawing? Then this last line here is the dimensions of the artwork. So the size of the artwork. So dimensions would be the same thing as the size of the artwork. Anything with two quotation marks, that means inches. Anything with just one quotation mark is feet. So anything with one quotation mark is feet. Anything with two quotation marks means inches. So you're going to go ahead and copy this question on the left hand side of your paper. Who was the artist and title of this artwork? Who was the artist and title of this artwork? So the way you can respond to that question is on the right hand side here. So it says in parentheses, the artist's name. So you go ahead and plug in the artist's name there. Then after the parentheses, it says, is the artist of, and then in quotation marks, it says artwork title. So everything in quotation marks, you go ahead and plug in the title of this artwork. So you go back to the artwork information and you go ahead and copy anything that's in quotation marks into this part here. So plug in the artist for this artwork and plug in the title of this artwork. So again, you're plugging in the artist of this artwork and the title of this artwork. If you have any questions about this part of the critique, go ahead and let me know.
So now we're going to take a look at the second part of a critique. This is the description part of a critique. So we're going to look at the artwork and you're going to respond to these questions here on the left hand side. So what do you see? Could be the first question that you respond to or you can pick the second question. What do you think is occurring in this image? So you only have to pick one question. You could pick either of those questions. What do you see or what do you think is occurring in this image? And you would write those questions on the left hand side. You only have to pick one question, just one question. And then on the right hand side, the way you can respond to those questions, if you chose the first question, the way you can respond to it is what I see in this image is, and then you fill in the blank. If you wrote down the second question, the way you can respond is what I think is occurring in this image is. So if you wrote down the first question, the way you can respond is what I see in this image is. And then if you wrote down the second question, what I think is occurring in this image is. So you're just describing exactly what's going on in the artwork. What's in the artwork? Who's in the artwork? What is that person doing? What's occurring? Just describe exactly what you see in this artwork. Is there a person? Is there an animal? Are there shapes? What types of colors are being used? Is it a famous person? Are there a bunch of different types of something? So you're just being as straightforward as possible. What do you see or what's occurring in this image?
This is the analysis part of a written critique. So we're going to look at the elements of art and principles of design. For this part, you can look at the definitions for the elements of art and principles of design and try to figure out which element of art or which principle of design stands out to you. So when you look at this artwork, which element of art or which principle of design stands out immediately to you? So the first question that you respond to is which element of art is being used? You would write that on the left hand side. The second question here is which principle of design is being used? And then no matter if you pick the first question or the second question, I also want you to respond to the third question. So it says which object uses those elements of art or principles of design? So what object is using those elements of art or principles of design? So if you pick the first question, you still have to respond to the third question. And if you pick the second question, you still have to respond to the third question as well. So you're responding to two questions here. If you chose the first question, you're doing the third as well. And if you pick the second question, you have to do the third question as well. So the way you can respond to these questions is on the right hand side. So you respond on the right hand side. The way you can respond to the first question is the element of art that is being used is the element of art that is being used is and then you would fill in the blank. If you chose the second question, the way you can respond is the principle of design that's being used is the principle of design that is being used is. So when you're looking at this artwork and if you chose the first question, is it line, color, shape, texture, value, space that stands out to you immediately when you look at this artwork? Or if you chose the second question, is it balance, contrast, dominance, emphasis, movement, rhythm, repetition, subordination, unity, variation? So when you look at this artwork, what stands out to you immediately in terms of elements of art or principles of design? So for this analysis part, you have to do two questions, the first and the third question or the second and the third question. So no matter if you choose the first or second question, you still have to do the third question. And the way you respond to the third question is the object that uses this element of art is. So tell me what object is actually using that element of art or what object is using that principle of design. So that's when you're ready to respond to the third question. The object that uses this element of art or principle design is. So I'll give you about five minutes here to respond. If you have any questions, go ahead and let me know.
So here's the third part here of the written critique. This is the interpretation part. So the first question that you can respond to on the left hand side of your paper, the first question that you can write down on the left side of your paper is going to be, what was the artist trying to do by making this artwork? So why would the artist even make this artwork? Or what does the artwork make you think of? So what was the artist trying to do by using these elements of art, by using these principles of design? Or what does this artwork make you think of? Does it make you think of a different artwork? Does it make you think of an experience that you've had? Does it make you think of something that has happened to you? So the way you can respond to these questions on the right hand side of your paper, if you wrote down the first question, the way you could respond is the artist was trying to show and then you would fill in the blank. So that's if you wrote down the first question, the artist was trying to show. And if you wrote down the second question, the way you could respond is, this artwork makes me think of. If you wrote down the second question, the way you could respond is, this artwork makes me think of. And then you would fill in the blank. So look at the artwork. Why would the artist even make this to begin with? What was so important? What was it that the artist was trying to get across to you as the viewer? And you only have to write down one question, just one question. If you have any questions about this part, go ahead and let me know.
So for this part of the written critique, this is the judgment part. So we have some questions here on the left hand side. So the first question that you could write down is, do you like this artwork and why? So you can write that question on the left hand side. Second question is, what was the artwork successful at? So you write the question on the left hand side. Third question is, what did the artwork fail to do? So this judgment part is about your opinion, whether you like the artwork or didn't like the artwork. So the way you can respond to the first question is, I like this artwork because, and you would write these responses on the right hand side. So the way that you would respond to this first question is, I like this artwork because, I like this artwork because. If you wrote down the second question, the way you could respond is, this artwork was successful at, this artwork was successful at, or this last question here, the artwork failed to, the artwork failed to. So in this last question here, you don't have to like the artwork. That's okay if you didn't like the artwork, but make a suggestion about what the artist could have done differently to make this artwork more interesting or to maybe get their point across that the artist was trying to get across. Or maybe you felt that the artist was able to successfully get their point across. And so that's what you would write down for the second question. This artwork was successful at, and then tell us what the artwork was actually successful at. So point that out and write that out. So again, you don't have to like every single artwork, but it's important that you get your opinion across and be able to make a suggestion about what the artist could have done differently. So if you have any questions about this part of the critique, go ahead and let me know.
So for this part of the written critique, we're going to go ahead and copy and combine all the sentences that you already wrote out, and we're going to put them together to make a paragraph. So take advantage of this opportunity to check the grammar, to check the spelling, and to maybe rewrite anything that you wrote out. So for the first part of this rewrite would be the biography of the artist. So what was the most important thing to you? So the second part should be the artwork info. So the artist and the title of the artwork that we're going to be talking about. The third part should be the description. What did you see in the artwork? Fourth part should be analysis. The fourth part should be the analysis. So which elements of art or principles of design were used in the artwork? Fifth part should be interpretation. What was the artwork about? Or what point was the artist trying to get across? The sixth part should be judgment. So did you like the artwork or did you not like the artwork? So take advantage of this opportunity to rewrite any of the senses that you already wrote out or if everything looks good, the grammar looks good, you would copy everything that you already wrote down and put it together to make a nice, neat, final written critique. To try to figure out what was this artwork about, what makes it important, and what can I take away from this artwork when I'm making my own artwork? So these are the types of questions that you should be asking yourself when you're making your artwork to make your own artwork purposeful so that your artwork serves a purpose and has a meaning to it. So you should be asking yourself these same questions when you're making your own artwork. What's the title of my artwork going to be? What's it going to be made out of? Why is it going to be made out of this medium? Which elements of art? Am I going to use? Which principles of design am I going to use? Why am I using those? How do I want this artwork to be interpreted by the viewer? If you have any questions about this part of the critique, go ahead and let me know.